Chapters 1 through 7 of the Second Epistle to the Corinthians, translated by Robert Young. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Second Epistle to the Corinthians, translated by Robert Young. Chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God, and Timotheus, the brother, to the assembly of God that is in Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of the mercies, and God of all comfort, who is comforting us in all our tribulation, for our being able to comfort those in any tribulation, through the comfort with which we are comforted ourselves by God. Because as the sufferings of the Christ do abound to us, so through the Christ doth abound also our comfort. And whether we be in tribulation, it is for your comfort and salvation that is wrought in the enduring of the same sufferings that we also suffer. Whether we are comforted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And our hope is steadfast for you, knowing that even as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so also the comfort. For we do not wish you to be ignorant, brethren, of our tribulation that happened to us in Asia, that we were exceedingly burdened above our power, so that we despaired even of life. But we ourselves in ourselves the sentence of the death have had, that we may not be trusting on ourselves, but on God, who is raising the dead, who out of so great a death did deliver us, and doth deliver, in whom we have hoped that even yet he will deliver, ye working together also for us by your supplication, that the gift through many persons to us, through many may be thankfully acknowledged for us. For our glorying is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and sincerity of God, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God, we did conduct ourselves in the world, and more abundantly toward you, for no other things do we write to you, but what ye either do read or also acknowledge. And I hope that also unto the end ye shall acknowledge, according as also ye did acknowledge us in part, that your glory we are, even as also ye are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus, and in this confidence I was purposing to come unto you before that a second favor you might have, and through you to pass to Macedonia, and again from Macedonia to come unto you, and by you to be sent forward to Judea. This therefore counseling, did I then use the lightness, or the things that I counsel, according to the flesh do I counsel, that it may be with me, yes, yes, and no, no? And God is faithful, that our word unto you became not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ among you, through us having been preached, through me and Silvanus and Timotheus, did not become yes and no, but in him it hath become yes, for as many as are promises of God, in him are the yes, and in him the amen, for glory to God through us, and he who is confirming you with us into Christ, and did anoint us, is God who also sealed us, and gave the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, and I for a witness on God to call upon my soul, that sparing you I came not yet to Corinth, not that we are lords over your faith, but we are workers together with your joy, for by the faith ye stand. 2. And I decided this to myself, not again to come in sorrow unto you, for if I make you sorry, then who is he who is making me glad? except he who is made sorry by me. And I wrote to you the same thing, that having come, I may not have sorrow from them of whom it behooved me to have joy. Having confidence in you all, that my joy is of you all, for out of much tribulation and pressure of heart, I wrote to you through many tears, not that ye might be made sorry, but that ye might know the love that I have more abundantly toward you. And if any one hath caused sorrow, he hath not caused sorrow to me, but in part that I may not burden you all, sufficient to such a one as this punishment, that is by the more part, so that on the contrary, 
it is rather for you to forgive and to comfort lest by overabundant sorrow such a one may be swallowed up wherefore i call upon you to confirm love to him for this also did i write that i might know the proof of you whether in regard to all things ye are obedient and to whom ye forgive anything i also for i also if i have forgiven anything to whom i have forgiven it because of you in the person of christ i forgive it that we may not be overreached by the adversary for of his devices we are not ignorant and having come to troas for the good news of the christ and a door to me having been opened in the lord i have not had rest to my spirit or my not finding titus my brother but having taken leave of them i went forth to macedonia and to god our thanks who at all times is leading us in triumph in the christ in the fragrance of his knowledge he is manifesting through us in every place because of christ a sweet fragrance we are to god in those being saved and in those being lost to the one indeed a fragrance of death to death and to the other a fragrance of life to life and for these things who is sufficient for we are not as the many adulterating the word of god but as of sincerity but as of god in the presence of god in christ we do speak three do we begin again to recommend ourselves except we need as some letters of recommendation unto you or from you our letter ye are having been written in our hearts known and read by all men manifested that ye are a letter of christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not in the tablets of stone but in fleshly tablets of the heart and such trust we have through the christ toward god not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god who also made us sufficient to be ministrants of a new covenant not of letter but of spirit for the letter doth kill and the spirit doth make alive and if the ministration of the death in letters engraved in stones came in glory so that the sons of israel were not able to look steadfastly to the face of moses because of the glory of his face which was being made useless how shall the ministration of the spirit not be more in glory for if the ministration of the condemnation is glory much more doth the ministration of the righteousness abound in glory for also even that which hath been glorious hath not been glorious in this respect because of the superior glory for if that which is being made useless is through glory much more that which is remaining is in glory having then such hope we use much freedom of speech and are not as moses who is putting a veil upon his own face for the sons of israel not steadfastly to look to the end of that which is being made useless but their minds were hardened for unto this day the same veil at the reading of the old covenant doth remain unwithdrawn which in christ is being made useless but till to-day when moses is read a veil upon their heart doth lie and whenever they may turn unto the lord the veil is taken away and the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and we all with unveiled faces the glory of the lord beholding in a mirror to the same image are being transformed from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord for because of this having this ministration according as we did receive kindness we do not faint but do renounce for ourselves the hidden things of shame not walking in craftiness nor deceitfully using the word of god but by the manifestation of the truth recommending ourselves unto every conscience of men before god and if also our good news is veiled and those perishing it is veiled in whom the god of this age did blind the minds of the unbelieving that there doth not shine forth to them the enlightening of the good news of the glory of the christ who is the image of god for not ourselves do we preach but christ jesus lord and ourselves your servants because of jesus because it is god who said out of darkness light is to shine who did shine in our hearts for the enlightening of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ 
and we have had this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us on every side being in tribulation but not straitened but perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed at all times the dying of the lord jesus bearing about in the body that the life also of jesus in our body may be manifested for death because of jesus for always are we who are living delivered up to death because of jesus that the life also of jesus may be manifested in our dying flesh so that the death indeed in us doth work and the life in you and having the same spirit of the faith according to that which hath been written i believed therefore i did speak we also do believe therefore also do we speak knowing that he who did raise up the lord jesus us also through jesus shall rise up and shall present with you for the all things are because of you that the grace having been multiplied because of the thanksgiving of the more may abound to the glory of god wherefore we faint not but if also our outward man doth decay yet the inward is renewed day by day for the momentary light matter of our tribulation more and more exceedingly an age during weight of glory doth work out for us we not looking to the things seen but to the things not seen for the things seen are temporary but the things not seen are age during five for we have known that if our earthly house of the tabernacle may be thrown down a building from god we have an house not made with hands age during in the heavens for also in this we groan for our dwelling that is from heaven earnestly desires to clothe ourselves it so being that having clothed ourselves we shall not be found naked for we also who are in the tabernacle do groan being burdened seeing we wish not to unclothe ourselves but to clothe ourselves that the mortal may be swallowed up of the life and he who did work us to the selfsame thing is god who also did give to us the earnest of the spirit having courage then at all times and knowing that being at home in the body we are away from home from the lord for through faith we walk not through sight we have courage and are well pleased rather to be away from the home of the body and to be at home with the lord wherefore also we are ambitious whether at home or away from home to be well pleasing to him for all of us it behoveth to be manifested before the tribunal of the christ that each one may receive the things done through the body in reference to the things that he did whether good or evil having known therefore the fear of the lord we persuade men and to god we are manifested and i hope also in your consciences to have been manifested for not again ourselves do we recommend to you but we are giving occasion to you of glorifying in our behalf that ye may have something in reference to those glorifying in face and not in heart for whether we were beside ourselves it was to god whether we be of sound mind it is to you for the love of the christ doth constrain us having judged thus that if one for all died then the whole died and for all he died that those living no more to themselves may live but to him who died for them and was raised again so that we henceforth have known no one according to the flesh and even if we have known christ according to the flesh yet now we know him no more so that if any one is in christ he is a new creature the old things did pass away lo become new have the old things and the old things are of god who reconciled us to himself through jesus christ and did give to us the ministration of the reconciliation how that god was in christ a world reconciling to himself not reckoning to them their trespasses and having put in us the word of the reconciliation in behalf of christ then we are ambassadors as if god were calling through us we beseech in behalf of christ be ye reconciled to god for him who did not know sin in our behalf he did make sin that we may become the righteousness of god in him six and working together also we call upon you that ye receive not in vain the grace of god for he saith 
in an acceptable time i did hear thee and in a day of salvation i did help thee lo now is a well accepted time lo now a day of salvation in nothing giving any cause of offence that the ministration may not be blamed but in everything recommending ourselves as god's ministrants in much patience in tribulations in necessities in distresses in stripes in imprisonments in insurrections in labours in watchings in fastings in pureness in knowledge in long suffering in kindness in the holy spirit in love unfeigned in the word of truth in the power of god through the armour of the righteousness on the right and on the left through glory and dishonour through evil report and good report as leading astray and true as unknown and recognised as dying and low we live as chastened and not put to death as sorrowful and always rejoicing as poor and making many rich as having nothing and possessing all things our mouth hath been open unto you o corinthians our heart hath been enlarged ye are not straitened in us and we are straitened in your own bowels and as a recompense of the same kind as to children i say it be ye enlarged also ye become not yoked with others unbelievers for what partaking in there for what partaking is there to righteousness and lawlessness and what fellowship to light with darkness and what concord to christ with belial or what part to a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement to the sanctuary of god with idols for ye are a sanctuary of the living god according as god said i will dwell in them and will walk among them and i will be their god and they shall be my people wherefore come ye forth out of the midst of them and be separated saith the lord and an unclean thing do not touch and i i will receive you and i will be to you for a father and ye ye shall be to me for sons and daughters saith the lord almighty seven having then these promises beloved may we cleanse ourselves from every pollution of flesh and spirit perfecting sanctification in the fear of god receive us no one did we wrong no one did we waste no one did we defraud not to condemn you do i say it for i have said before that in our hearts ye are to die with and to live with great is my freedom of speech unto you great my glory on your behalf i have been filled with the comfort i overabound with the joy of all our tribulation for also we having come to macedonia no relaxation hath our flesh had but on every side we are in tribulation without our fightings within fears but he who is comforting thee cast down god he did comfort us in the presence of titus and not only in his presence but also in the comfort with which he was comforted over you declaring to us you longing desire your lamentation your zeal for me so that the more i did rejoice because even if i made you sorry in the letter i do not repent if even i did repent for i perceive that the letter even if for an hour did make you sorry i now do rejoice now that ye were made sorry but that ye were made sorry to reformation for ye were made sorry toward god that in nothing ye might receive damage from us for the sorrow toward god reformation to salvation not to be repented of doth work and the sorrow of the world doth work death for lo this same thing your being made sorry toward god how much diligence it doth work in you but defence but displeasure but fear but longing desire but zeal but revenge in everything ye did approve yourselves to be pure in the matter if then i also wrote to you not for his cause who did wrong nor for his cause who did suffer wrong but for our diligence in your behalf being manifested unto you before god because of this we have been comforted in your comfort and more abundantly the more did we rejoice in the joy of titus that his spirit has been refreshed from you all because if anything to him in your behalf i have boasted i was not put to shame but as all things in truth we did speak to you so also our boasting before titus 
became truth and his tender affection is more abundantly toward you remembering the obedience of you all how with fear and trembling ye did receive him i rejoice therefore that in everything i have courage in you End of chapters one through seven chapters eight through thirteen of the second epistle to the corinthians translated by robert young this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eight and we make known to you brethren the grace of god that hath been given in the assemblies of macedonia because in much trial of tribulation the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty did abound to the riches of their liberality because according to their power i testify and above their power they were willing of themselves with much entreaty calling on us to receive the favour and the fellowship of the ministration to the saints and not according as we expected but themselves they did give first to the lord and to us through the will of god so that we exhorted titus that according as he did begin before so also he may finish to you also this favour but even as in everything ye do abound in faith and word and knowledge and all diligence and in your love to us that also in this grace ye may abound not according to command do i speak but because of the diligence of others and of your love proving the genuineness for ye know the grace of our lord jesus christ that because of you he became poor being rich that ye by that poverty may become rich and an opinion in this do i give for this to you is expedient who not only to do but also to will did begin before a year ago and now also finish doing it that even as there is the readiness of the will so also the finishing out of that which ye have for if the willing mind is present according to that which any one may have it is well accepted not according to that which he hath not for not that for others release and ye pressure do i speak but by equality at the present time your abundance for their want that also their abundance may be for your want that there may be equality according as it hath been written he who did gather much had nothing over and he who did gather little had no lack and thanks to god who is putting the same diligence for you in the heart of titus because indeed the exhortation he accepted and being more diligent of his own accord he went forth unto you and we sent with him the brother whose praise in the good news is through all the assemblies and not only so but who was also appointed by vote by the assemblies our fellow traveller with this favour that is ministered by us unto the glory of the same lord and your willing mind avoiding this lest any one may blame us in this abundance that is ministered by us providing right things not only before the lord but also before men and we sent with them our brother whom we proved in many things many times being diligent and now much more diligent by the great confidence that is towards you whether about titus my partner and towards you fellow worker whether our brethren apostles of the assembly glory of christ the showing therefore of your love and of our boasting on your behalf to them show ye even in the face of the assemblies nine for indeed concerning the ministration that is for the saints it is superfluous for me to write to you for i have known your readiness of mind which in your behalf i boast of to macedonians that achaia hath been prepared a year ago and the zeal of you did stir up the more part and i sent the brethren that our boasting on your behalf may not be made vain in this respect that according as i said ye may be ready lest if macedonians may come with me and find you unprepared we we may be put to shame that we say not ye in the same confidence of boasting necessary therefore i thought it to exhort the brethren that they may go before to you and may make up before your formally announced blessing that this be ready as a blessing and not as covetousness and this 
he who is sowing sparingly also shall reap and he who is sowing in blessings in blessings also shall reap each one according as he doth purpose in heart not out of sorrow or out of necessity for a cheerful giver doth god love and god is able all grace to cause to abound to you that in everything always all sufficiency having ye may abound every good work according as it hath been written he dispersed abroad he gave to the poor his righteousness doth remain to the age and may he who is supplying seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness in everything being enriched all liberality which doth work through us thanksgiving to god because the ministration of this service not only is supplying the wants of the saints but is also abounding through many thanksgivings to god through the proof of this ministration glorifying god for the subjection of your confession to the good news of the christ and for the liberality of the fellowship to them and to all and by their supplication in your behalf longing after you because of the exceeding grace of god upon you thanks also to god for his unspeakable gift ten and i paul myself do call upon you through the meekness and gentleness of the christ who in presence indeed am humble among you and being absent have courage toward you and i beseech you that being present i may not have courage with the confidence with which i reckon to be bold against certain reckoning us as walking according to the flesh for walking in the flesh not according to the flesh do we war for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly but powerful to god for bringing down of strongholds reasonings bring down and every high thing lifted up against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the christ and being in readiness to avenge every disobedience whenever your obedience may be fulfilled the things in presence do ye see if any one hath trusted in himself to be christ this let him reckon again from himself that according as he is christ so also we are christ for even if also anything more abundantly i shall boast concerning our authority that the lord gave us for building up and not for casting you down i shall not be ashamed that i may not seem as if i would terrify you through the letters because the letters indeed saith one are weighty and strong and the bodily presence weak and the speech despicable this one let him reckon thus that such as we are in word through letters being absent such also being present we are indeed for we do not make bold to rank or to compare ourselves with certain of those commending themselves but they among themselves measuring themselves and comparing themselves with themselves are not wise and we in regard to the unmeasured things will not boast ourselves but after the measure of the line that the god of measure did appoint to us to reach even unto you for not as not reaching to you do we stretch ourselves overmuch for even unto you did we come in the good news of the christ not boasting of the things not measured in other men's labors and having hope your faith increasing in you to be enlarged according to our line into abundance in the places beyond you to proclaim good news not in another's line in regard to the things made ready to boast and he who is boasting in the lord let him boast for not he who is commending himself is approved but he whom the lord doth commend eleven o oh, that ye were bearing with me a little of the folly but ye also do bear with me for i am zealous for you with the zeal of god for i did betroth you to one husband a pure virgin to present to christ and i fear lest as the serpent did beguile eve in his subtlety so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the christ for if indeed he who is coming doth preach another jesus whom we did not preach or another spirit ye receive which ye did not receive or other good news which ye did not accept well were ye bearing it for i reckon that i have been nothing behind the very chiefest apostles and even if unlearned in word yet not in knowledge but in everything we were made manifest in all things to you the sin did i do 
myself humbling that ye may be exalted because freely the good news of god i did proclaim to you other assemblies i did rob having taken wages for your ministration and being present with you and having been in want i was chargeable to no one for my lack did the brethren supply having come from macedonia and in everything burdenless to you i did keep myself and will keep the truth of christ is in me because this boasting shall not be stopped in regard to me in the regions of achaia wherefore because i do not love you god hath known in what i do i also will do that i may cut off the occasion of those wishing an occasion that in that which they boast they may be found according as we also for those such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of christ and no wonder for even the adversary doth transform himself into a messenger of light no great thing then if also his ministrants do transform themselves as ministrants of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works again i say may no one think me to be a fool and if otherwise even as a fool receive me that i also a little may boast that which i speak i speak not according to the lord but as in foolishness in this the confidence of boasting since many boast according to the flesh i also will boast for gladly do ye bear with the fools being wise for ye bear if any one is bring you under bondage if any one doth devour if any one doth take away if any one doth exalt himself if any one on the face doth smite you in reference to dishonour i speak how that we were weak and in whatever any one is bold in foolishness i say it i also am bold hebrews are they i also israelites are they i also seed of abraham are they i also ministrants of christ are they as beside myself i speak i more in labours more abundantly in stripes above measure in prisons more frequently in deaths many times from jews five times forty stripes save one i did receive thrice was i beaten with rods once was i stoned thrice was i shipwrecked a night and a day in the deep i have passed journeyings many times perils of rivers perils of robbers perils from kindred perils from nations perils in city perils in wilderness perils in seas perils among false brethren in laboriousness in painfulness in watchings many times in hunger and thirst in fastings many times in cold and nakedness apart from the things without the crowding upon me that is daily the care of all the assemblies who is infirm and i am not infirm who is stumbled and i am not fired if to boast it behoveth me of the things of my infirmity i will boast the god and father of our lord jesus christ who is blessed to the ages hath known that i do not lie in damascus the ethnarch of aretas the king was watching the city of the damascenes wishing to seize me and through a window in a rope basket i was let down through the wall and fled out of his hands twelve to boast really is not profitable for me for i will come to visions and revelations of the lord i have known a man in christ fourteen years ago whether in the body i have not known whether out of the body i have not known god hath known such an one being caught away unto the third heaven and i have known such a man whether in the body whether out of the body i have not known god hath known that he was caught away to the paradise and heard unutterable sayings that it is not possible for man to speak of such an one i will boast and of myself i will not boast except in my infirmities for if i may wish to boast i shall not be a fool for truth i will say but i forbear lest any one in regard to me may think anything above what he doth see me or doth hear anything of me and that by the exceeding greatness of the revelations i might not be exalted over much there was given to me a thorn in the flesh a messenger of the adversary that he might buffet me that i might not be exalted over much concerning this thing thrice the lord did i call upon that it might depart from me and he said to me 
sufficient for thee is my grace for my power in infirmity is perfected most gladly therefore will i rather boast in my infirmities that the power of the christ may rest on me wherefore i am well pleased in infirmities in damages in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ for whenever i am infirm then i am powerful i have become a fool boasting ye ye did compel me for i ought by you to have been commended for in nothing was i behind the very chiefest apostles even if i am nothing the signs indeed of the apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders in mighty deeds for what is there in which ye were inferior to the rest of the assemblies except that i myself was not a burden to you forgive me this injustice lo a third time i am ready to come unto you and i will not be a burden to you for i seek not yours but you for the children ought not for the parents to lay up but the parents for the children and i most gladly will spend and be entirely spent for your souls even if more abundantly loving you less i am loved and be it so i i did not burden you but being crafty with guile i did take you any one of those whom i have sent unto you by him did i take advantage of you i entreated titus and did send with him the brother and did titus take advantage of you in the same spirit did we not walk did we not in the same steps again think ye that to you we are making defence before god in christ do we speak and the all things beloved are for your upbuilding for i fear lest having come not such as i wish i may find you and i i may be found by you such as ye do not wish lest there be strifes envyings wraths revelries evil speakings whisperings puffings up insurrections lest again having come my god may humble me in regard to you and i may be well many of those having sinned before and not having reform concerning the uncleanness and whoredom and lasciviousness that they did practice thirteen this third time do i come unto you on the mouth of two witnesses or three shall every saying be established i said before and i say it before as being present the second time and being absent now do i write to those having sinned before and to all the rest that if i come again i will not spare since a proof ye seek of the christ speaking in me who to you is not infirm but is powerful in you for even if he was crucified from infirmity yet he doth live from the power of god for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him from the power of god toward you your own selves try ye if ye are in the faith your own selves prove ye do ye not know your own selves that jesus christ is in you if ye be not in some respect disapproved of and i hope that ye shall know that we we are not disapproved of and i pray before god that ye do no evil that not that we may appear approved but that ye may do that which is right and we may be as disapproved for we are not able to do anything against the truth but for the truth for we rejoice when we may be infirm and ye may be powerful in this also we pray for your perfection because of this these things being absent i write that being present i may not treat any sharply according to the authority that the lord did give me for building up and not for casting down henceforth brethren rejoice be made perfect be comforted be of the same mind be at peace and the god of the love and peace shall be with you salute one another in an holy kiss salute you do all the saints the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit is with you all amen end of chapters eight through thirteen end of the second epistle to the corinthians translated by robert young